Hi, I'm Christina Klimas, and we are at an interview, building digital product, where we speak about the technologies that can boost your business here and now. And our today guest is Luis Gondi. He is the VP and CIO at Johnson & Johnson. He is an expert in integrating cutting-edge technologies and automation to drive business growth and chase customer satisfaction. In Johnson & Johnson, Louis plays a pivotal role in fostering regional growth through innovating solutions. He is also a tech leader and a mentor. Hi, Louis. Hello. Hi. I wanted to thank you that you uh, agreed to join this episode and thank you for your time. Throughout your career, you've been involved in digital transformation in healthcare in Latin American countries. You were working closely with the local people. And I wanted to ask you, how do you navigate cultural difference to ensure successful collaboration? Maybe do you have some tips for our listeners? When you talk about uh, different cultures, there is different cultures for sure that you have to understand. So it's somehow important to everything that you do. You respect the local differences, uh, that you search for the engagement, that you try to, if possible, to speak the local language. And I think this is something that uh, you build some kind of a trust as well. Uh, but. I would say that when you are in an organization, I think one of the things that everybody's kind of uh, doing the same is because of the culture of the company. So the culture of the company helps a lot to make sure that when you're talking to people, they are understanding the common goals of the organization. And of course, the goals that each one of the functions need to have. Uh, and this is supported by a foundation. That's the culture of the organization. So even though you have different cultures uh, and in different countries, uh, the basis as the culture of the organization uh, supports uh, the work when you're doing uh, this kind of thing. So based on my experience, I would say that when you have a strong culture, the culture supports everything that you're doing. And then, of course, all the other things that I was just saying before uh, will bring this, uh, all the difference together to a commonality. And did you have maybe in your history of uh, work some cases when uh, after them you understood that you need to uh, pay more attention to these cultural differences that, that exist in some countries, continent? There is, uh, how can I say, there is differences, of course, uh, in Latin uh, culture, then more in, in European and then... Mm -hmm the Asian culture. So there is things that are really different that you have to understand. Even things like uh, time to have lunch, time to have dinner. Sometimes in different cultures, you have like uh, different times and you have to adapt a little bit when you are uh, in the countries with the people. Uh, religion is another thing as well. So I think respecting uh, the boundaries and making sure that uh, what you're doing is towards to the common goal of the organization, I think brings a more clarity and more transparency to everybody and also it's easy for you to navigate when again i'm going to reinforce that because I, I really believe that a strong culture in the organization help a lot the people that are coming to the organization aligning to the same thing and then of course this difference uh when you're there when you're in the countries it's important for you to understand and adapt mm -hmm. agree And also, I wanted to ask you that we saw on your LinkedIn that you mentioned contributing to significant growth in the Latin region in 2022. And what um, would you main tips for healthcare companies that uh, looking to um, uh, expand to new markets, uh, to new regions? Maybe do you have some advices for that? Yeah, I think I think I really believe that. Uh... The things that we did together as a group uh, and, and some kind of a, uh, independent on the on the industry that you are, if you're in the healthcare, in uh, consumer goods, uh, in any other industry, in financial, I think the first thing that you need to do is to have clear goals. Uh, you need to really define clear goals. And, and then when you define that, 
uh, you need to cascade this down, uh, depending on the responsibility that each one will have in the organization. If you cascade down in a very good way, people will have accountability and ownership together with the high stakeholders. So I believe that uh, clear goals is one. The second one is really prioritize the things that you're going to be doing. So you need to have like a clear priorities uh, for you to avoid uh, deviating to do what uh, sometimes is going to be the next uh, shine object, uh, but uh, deviate your attention to the goal. Uh, so I would say the second one is really prioritize. And the third one, if possible, again, uh, depending on the size of the organization, depending on the culture of the organization, it's about simplification, how we simplify things, how we make sure that uh, we streamline uh, the levels in the organization, how we streamline uh, the the ownership of the projects as well. If you have like a lot of different people owning a piece, it's a little bit uh, tough to organize and to put everybody into the same page. So if you can reduce this spam, uh, I think it's it's another uh, good practice that we put together. And, and by doing this, of course, having a great alignment between technology and the business. I mean the technology, but I had previous experience uh, within the business. So having these right mindsets about so what is the problem that I'm trying to solve and then applying the best technology, uh, I think that's the right way to go, not the other way around. So first find the problem, define the goals, cascade the goals, prioritize and simplify. I think those are the things that we could contribute to last year to a great result and the previous years as well. Like that's pretty much the way that I've been working for many, many years. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would like to switch uh, a bit to uh, technology questions. And so, as we all know, you have been a global technology leader for over two decades in various companies. And maybe you have this feeling on or when you determine that it's time to update technologies and embrace innovations. Maybe you understand that it's like the finish line and you need to do it right now. Yes. Uh, I, I I really believe that uh, the first thing that you need to do is to assess uh, the technology that you have, right? So understand uh, if it's the time to change or not. The first thing is you need to understand what you have. Then, of course, uh, a good... Uh, analysis on the market so benchmark sessions really try to talk to your peers understand like uh, uh who else is doing like uh, a different path uh, and then understand if it's time for you to move depending on what you have sometimes you do a benchmark analysis and and you identify that no i'm, I'm very good uh, compared to my peers so it doesn't mean that you don't, don't need to do anything you can open gap you can always like try to do new things but at least you compare yourself. And if you identify that uh, you're lagging behind for, I don't know, uh, investment uh, or because of priorities, whatever it happened, uh, you need to identify first what you have. Uh, then of course, it's always good to understand if the new thing that you're gonna be doing or if you're changing something is to support a process that is new and you didn't have before, or something incremental that you, you were doing, but you need to really continue doing these incremental benefits. And then these incremental benefits will have the payoff. So understanding the financial uh, outcome is important. So the return on investment is really important. So the thing that you're doing is going to bring the return that pays off the investment, yes or no. Uh, I think that's the second thing that I would say. So always understanding if it's going to pay off what you're doing. And, and the third one, of course, uh, we are in a in an environment that uh, it's more volatile than before, uh, more things happening, a lot of uh, security issues, depending on the industry that you that you are, you have more compliance issues uh, based on regulations, local regulations. So I think the the other thing that you need to understand is sometimes you need to invest, but it's to make sure that you're protecting something that in the future you can prevent uh, a, a loss. For example, it's not about in this case 
an effective or immediate ROI, but something about something that you're avoiding to happen. So maybe a software that's outdated, that is you're gonna lose the support from the from the supplier, and then you have to go for the new one. Otherwise, it can be uh, bad for your organization. Or, for example, if you, there is like a lot of new virus, virus attacks, and, and and all of that. So how can you make sure that you have the right path uh, to protect your organization? So in technology, this third component is really important. That is to make sure that uh, whatever you're going to put uh, on top of what you have, you can at least explain why you're doing that. And then it's going to be easy to, to get the investment or at least it's going to be clear to everybody the risks that, you, that you're taking if you don't do this. So I would say that these three points are, are the ones that's uh, how I evaluate if we're going to invest more in different directions or in something else that we don't have. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And uh, speaking about AI, could you share how AI can be used to advance, um, uh, to, to advance per personalized medicine within healthcare companies? I know that sometimes companies don't need to use uh, AI to improve their services or businesses, but uh, in case uh, uh, rather, how do you think it could help companies? Yeah, sure. I I, I believe that AI uh, for many many years we are seeing the evolution of AI, but uh, I would say that in the past two years we we are hearing much more because of ChatGPT. Of course, it's a tool that mm -hmm. everybody can use, and, and then. When it's close to to the to the biggest population, let's say something that creates uh, a fuss. So everybody's talking, everybody's into that now, and that's a very good question because, of course, uh, it's not that we're gonna apply AI to everything that we do, right? Sometimes we are over over complicating a process just by ah, let's apply AI to that. Maybe we, you don't need to do that, or maybe even you can you can have like higher costs just because you're trying to do something that you don't need to. Sometimes also you don't have the data or, or the quality of the data is poor. Uh, and if you apply uh, AI, the outcome is going to be bad because the quality of your data is not that good. Uh, sometimes also it's something that's not aligned with the company needs or priorities. So you're just doing because ah, everybody's doing, so let me do as well. One thing is to test. The other thing is really try to replace something that you don't need to. So I would say that... Uh, it's important for you to make sure that uh, you're not uh, disaligned or, or that you don't have a misalignment of what, what the customer needs are to your organization. Another one that everybody talks a lot, of course, is about the ethical parts and the privacy mm -hmm. concerns. So if you are in a regulated market or even if you, if you are not, you always need to make sure that you're uh, giving the opportunity to the ones that you're using the data, you're saying that you're using the data and somehow you're making sure that uh, you're being compliant to the regulations for that data, for the usage of the data, that you're not selling or that you're not crossing any any line that uh, you can't. I think that part, it's really, really important. That's the privacy one. So making sure that anything that you're doing, you're doing the right way. Uh, I would say that uh, if I can highlight uh, for uh, cases that uh, not necessarily you need to apply AI, I would go or I would start with these ones that, uh, that I'm talking about. Also, um, what I wanted to ask you uh, also is related to digital transformation. And a successful digitalization in healthcare along with digital transformation uh, requires, as we all know, effective collaborative collaboration between IT professionals and healthcare providers. And uh, during your whole career, have you ever faced the resistance um, from healthcare workers uh, who uh, doesn't want to embrace some new technologies or products uh, and um, didn't want to do this? And uh, how did you manage uh, those cases? No, it's a great question. I think that this applies to, again, to any industry that you are. 
I've been working in the healthcare for the past one year and a half. Uh, prior to that, I worked like many years in CPGs. Uh, uh, so pretty much like 20 years uh, in CPG. And prior to that, uh, some, some time in telecom and also in consultancy. And of course, I, I would say that uh, during this past 25 years, let's say, uh, I would, again, the world changes a lot. There is a lot of new technology. There is a lot of new things that we are that we are doing. Devices everywhere, so everybody has like a mobile device, like a wearable or anything else. So, I, I would say that the evolution that uh, brought us here, it's it's one thing that uh, when we think about digital transformation challenges, uh, every year that uh, we discover and we adopt a new thing brings us challenge because we are having to adapt the process that we had before. We need to adapt the ways of working. We need to adapt with what are we going to work. So before it was a big computer, then everybody started to work in, in laptops, uh, then tablets, then mobile devices. So I think this is a natural evolution. And what I would say that we have to do with the labor force that we have to the collaborators, to the suppliers, to the partners, to everybody is first to have the empathy to understand what are the concerns and challenges that we can have uh, in any industry. So we can talk about healthcare, but uh, in any industry, we're going to have concerns. So first is to understand and to have empathy. I would say second is it's uh, we need to educate people. We need to train. Yeah. When, when you're moving to something else that's unknown but uh, somehow there is a group of people that are let's say in the vanguard of this you have to make sure that these people start to train the others so training it's another uh, important piece education is really important for us to uh, navigate in these changes uh, the other one the third one i would say that's engagement you need to have people together with you embracing this. So you need to uh, bring the engagement up in order for you to really make the change. Otherwise it's not going to be possible because the change is gonna be made by everybody that uh, is working together with you. It's not just one person that's gonna uh, pull everybody up. So we need to make sure that we have the right engagement in the organization. Fourth, I would say communication and transparency. So. Transparency on why you're doing this, why you're going in this direction, and the communication is really important to make sure that you spread the word, and you avoid like uh, you know like uh, the corridor chats or anything that's gonna happen that's outside of what is really the intent of this transformation. So that when you try to transform, change something, you need to over communicate to make sure that people understand why you're doing that. And I would say. Uh, not an exhaustive list, but if I can put a fifth one, I would say that's really when you do this, you need to celebrate as well. You need to make sure that people are going to celebrate together with you uh, the changes and the positive outcomes that you're having. So make sure that you're celebrating the success and recognizing the people that are contributing the most to that. I think it's important, so recognition and 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 making sure that you're celebrating i would say that's the again not exhaustive but something that uh, in my experience i've been uh, trying to apply uh when we are trying to change something from one place to the other uh when you are talking about this i also come up with this um insight maybe that uh, i think that we are a lot, lot of the time, people are scared because of un unknown, as you mentioned, and we need to emphasize how this tool can improve and optimize their time. We don't need uh, to uh, tell them that they need like lots of the time to understand it, or they don't need to think like this. They need to understand that it will improve and uh, optimize, uh, simplify their life and work routine, so it will have like beneficial result in the future and maybe it will i don't know uh, motivate someone to adopt new technologies or new tool oh that's great that's great thanks
Yeah. And also my last question from this section is uh, that in LinkedIn, you mentioned a passion for supporting startups and social impact initiatives. And can you share an example of how you, you have contributed to this area? Before I answer that, I, I'm noticing that you have like a trooper helmet uh, right behind you. So I, I really like Star Wars as well. So it's, <laughs> a, it's a great inspiration of technology for sure. Oh, uh, thank you. Well, talking about startups and, and innovation, I, I think this is something that I'm passionate about and I really like to be involved in these initiatives and try to to understand and, and see how I, I, I can contribute and, and in various ways. I think for me, it's a privilege every time that I'm invited to a mentor or to advise or to have like a direct involvement on this. Uh, I believe that uh, more and more uh, we do that uh, we can really make sure that uh, sometimes you are providing some kind of uh, impact uh, in, in, in underinvested communities, for example, or you can really make sure that uh, you're addressing underserved communities as well with new solutions. I think uh, that's why I'm passionate about really trying to make sure that uh, we are put something uh, in the market that uh, we're going to help others. Uh, and of course, I can I can mention a few that have been assisted uh, during these past few years on strategic planning. Sometimes like really to try to make sure that you define a good mission, a vision, what is the long-term goals. Uh, but of course, when you're talking about startup, you have to define very, very well the short-term short -term goals in order for you to, to thrive. So I think strategic planning is an area that I've been helping a lot uh, with my experience. Uh, I would say product development, uh, listening to the customer uh, is really important. So you do something that's not to you, but something uh, who who is the persona that you're trying to, uh, to impact and then designing the product towards to that. I think that's another uh, important part that uh, I'm trying to help to make sure that every time that any startup is doing something, they are really first understanding the customer. And then the go-to-market strategy. It's important to have a go-to-market strategy to make sure that somehow you're positioning well, uh, your products, your 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 solution, uh, and then you're interacting with this uh, audience in order to make sure that uh, you're getting your products better. Or sometimes uh, you you even gonna find something that you're gonna have to pivot. But if you do that, you have to do very fast. So go-to-market strategy is really uh, importance and then uh, in all this I would say as a cross uh, thing that I've been trying to help as well when I can is to make sure that we are really uh, helping on outreach structure to fundraising or even to partnerships that uh, will validate the hypothesis the product that you have in order for you to have like a more uh, likelihood of success because of course, it's not that you're going to have, but uh, what I've been trying to do with these mentoring sessions, with these uh, boards that sometimes I'm participating is to make sure that we diminish the likelihood of failure. It's not that it's not going to fail, but at least we try to make sure that we put the the, the right points for them to avoid uh, the failure. So that's mm -hmm. pretty much this, these four things that I've been doing. Thank you. And um, right now, I wanted to ask you flash question. So I will give you two options and you just need to uh, um, choose the, the one. Okay. Uh, are you ready? Yes. <laughs> Northern or South America? Uh, South America. Uh, leading companies or studying? Leading companies. Uh, creating a presentation or presenting it? Presenting. Uh, skydiving or water diving? Skydiving. Uh, challenges or truths? Challenges. Great. Uh, thank you very much for joining us today. It was a pleasure to speak with you and meet you and hear a lot of the new information regarding your experience. So thank you very much for coming to our show today. No, thanks so much for, for the invitation. And, and again, 
uh, hope that uh, you guys have an amazing weekend ahead. Thank you very much.